Hi everyone, my name is Mark Wixmonski. I'm the geriatric nurse clinician here at the Council on Aging and we are on site today here at uh, the Council on Aging in the Muir Room and I'm with Maria. Maria is a nurse who's also a student. Uh, she's been with us this past semester studying community health in an effort to uh, earn a bachelor's degree and in her coursework she's noticed that uh, seniors because of the aging process are more prone to dehydration and some fluid balance issues so we're here today to talk about uh, dehydration and fluid balance so with that I'll have uh, Maria give a, give a brief introduction and we'll ask questions and that type of thing. Hi I'm Maria from UMass Boston thank you for having me Mark. Um, yeah so dehydration is actually a 12-month problem you're probably thinking why are we talking about this in November and December because I've noticed in the community setting that seniors um, are dehydrated year round. And a lot of times that is from not incorporating enough fluids into our daily lives. So I would encourage you that if you're not a water fan, that you utilize some more fruit juices added to your diet, um, a glass of milk, something with every meal. Thank you. So I'm, I'm thinking about the aging process and what happens to our bodies um, that may make us more prone to becoming dehydrated. So we all have a hypothalamus gland when we're born and that is what signals us that we're thirsty. And as we age, that gland shrinks. So we're not always getting the message that we're thirsty um, until it's later on. You know, you'll notice your urine will be darker, you could have some confusion, headaches, those are all signs of dehydration. And dehydration is not only a physiological problem, it can contribute to a physical problem as well. Studies have shown that people that are dehydrated are actually prone to an increased risk in having a fall, which nobody wants. Thank you, so are there certain medications that may make us more prone to dehydration? Yes. So a lot of times, um, if we're trying to get rid of fluid, we'll be on uh, a medication that's a diuretic. A common one is Lasix. Now, um, I can't give medical advice, but I would say, you know, you're supposed to incorporate more fluids when you are taking that and having a conversation with your doctor as to how much fluid you should be drinking when you are on a diuretic medication. Thank you. So. I love coffee, uh, I love tea, um, that's the only thing I drink because water is gross to me. Um, what can I do to prevent dehydration uh, and still incorporate the drinks that I enjoy? So if you like coffee, which all of us do, I myself am a big coffee fan, um, I always try to have one glass of water or another beverage whenever I'm having a cup of coffee. And if your tea has to have caffeine in it, um, I would say to do the same. Otherwise, if you have a caffeine-free tea, that can be equivalent to getting in your fluid intake as well. And so, can you briefly go over again the signs and symptoms of, of dehydration that I want to be mindful of? Sure. So I'd say to make sure that you're watching the color of your urine. Um, you don't want it to be too dark or smelling. That's one of the classic signs of dehydration. Confusion, dizziness, headaches, low blood pressure, those are also signs that you are dehydrated. And so we talked about, thank you for that. Um, if I am feeling thirsty, what does that mean? So if you're already feeling thirsty, chances are that you're already dehydrated because that's actually one of the last um, signs that we are dehydrated. So by that point, you really want to get your fluid intake in. And I would also encourage you to drink more fluids throughout the day. If you're worried about incontinence, I would say to um, not drink so much before bedtime and try to have um, a beverage with every meal. And if you don't like beverages or liquids, you know, you could also utilize fruits and vegetables. Those, they, they have a lot of water in them, um, cantaloupe, watermelon. Those are all water-loving fruits. And are there any urinary issues um, that can be prevented by um, maintaining proper hydration? Yes, if you've ever had the misfortune of having a urinary tract infection, you know how uncomfortable that can be. So 
if you that can dehydration can definitely um, increase the risk of having a urinary tract infection so by drinking more you can prohibit that from happening thank you and if you were to give one recommendation about how much fluid someone should be drinking throughout the day um, in addition to are there any other we, we talked about the signs and symptoms and other tests and things that can happen when you're dehydrated, but if someone's at home and they want to, let's say, test their skin or something like that to see if they're dehydrated, uh, what can they do? So a recommendation and then any type of test they can do. Sure. So what really is recommended is eight eight-ounce glasses um, of fluid per day. Studies have shown that five eight-ounce glasses is sufficient, um, and that can actually de decrease the risk of coronary artery disease. Um, I would also say a simple test for you to do would be a skin turgor test where you're actually pinching um, the center of your, your hand and seeing if it stays tented, that's, that's a sign that you're dehydrated. Thank you. Um, and so did you have any last final thoughts about dehydration related to seniors before we wrap up? I would just say that, you know, try to make it something that you enjoy drinking. If you don't like water, you're really not going to drink it. But I find myself that I add, if I add just a little splash of juice, maybe some lemon juice, some lime juice. If you're diabetic, Crystal Light's a great option. Um, if you're going to have diet soda, I would say to try to limit the diet soda, maybe one per day or even a half of a can a day. And if you use teas, um, milk seasonally we can have apple cider eggnog in the summertime you could have some you know more fresh fruit juices so maria thank you very much um, and if folks have continued questions related to their hydration status dehydration or any other questions in general feel free to give me a call we can certainly uh, go through those and if you have something more acute where you're significantly concerned um, obviously contact your provider's office. So again, Maria, thank you. It's a pleasure having you this semester and that's our segment on Living Out Loud. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Mark Wixmonski. I'm the Geriatric Nurse Clinician with the Arlington Council on Aging. Welcome to another episode of Living Out Loud and today I'm joined by Elena. Elena is a nurse uh, and studying at UMass Boston, studying community health, and she's been with us this uh, past semester, uh, interacting with various folks in the community, seniors specifically. Uh, and as she's been observing folks in town uh, and knowing about the importance of uh, nutrition, hydration, and just related to overall health, lifestyle status, good health, um, she's noticed some issues related to accessing food and some barriers, and uh, was curious to have her share with you folks about different stories and different interactions she's had with seniors and how accessing food can um, be a challenge. Hello, thank you for having me. Um, yes, one of the problems that I found most um, in my work here at the Council on Aging is um, perceived or actual barriers to physically accessing food. Um, in one example, I did a home visit with a woman in town who, um, as a result of mostly embarrassment, the embarrassment of asking her children to bring her to the grocery store, had very little food in her refrigerator. The food she did have, um, some was inappropriate, some of it was old, and my mission for that day anyway was really to educate her and share with her about the different uh, opportunities and resources that are available here at the Council on Aging. One of which is um, a daily meal that provides 33% of uh, appropriate nutritional needs for seniors in the community. The other is assistance um, from either Mark or from Susan um, in getting um, benefits like SNAP. Um, that's the Supplemental Nutrition Program. Um, it's income-based and they can help you with the application process if you qualify. The other is an organization called World Peace, which deliver wonderful, fresh, organic food um, here to the Council on Aging and can be picked up. And I've seen, um, you know, I've seen it firsthand and it's really beautiful and nice food and people really seem to enjoy it. Uh, if folks are in the community and they want to uh, 
go somewhere for a, a low cost, nutritious meal? Um, where can they, can they go? Are there any community resources um, that they can utilize nearly daily? So aside from the meal that's offered here daily, um, there's also, they can set up like bride services if they you know, wanna do some grocery shopping. Um, one of the programs is actually called The Ride um, in which you'll set up uh, you know, transportation to get you to and from the grocery store. Um, there's also the community van, um, which also does uh, grocery trips, I believe. Um, and then there are food pantries as well. And there are food pantries um, in and around the town of Arlington that are really open to all, um, and they provide different types of uh, nutritious support. Thank you. So uh, what's your experience been when interacting with seniors about Meals on Wheels and how they might be able to enroll in that type of service? Um, I think a lot of people were surprised to know that it even existed. Um, one of the great things about Meals on Wheels is that the employees uh, who deliver the food also uh, tend to check on that um, member in the, of the community and they'll report back to, to headquarters if they find anything unusual or worrisome. Um, and that's something that I think is very different and that's something that Meals on Wheels has done for years, kind of have this uh, reporting back to make sure that the people that they serve um, are well taken care of. Thank you. And so, again, Meals on Wheels is operated by Minuteman Senior Services, and if folks have questions about, you know, related to Meals on Wheels and enrolling in that service, can contact the Council on Aging, we can um, steer them in the right direction uh, for that. So are there any other meals that are offered here at the Council on Aging, uh, for example, lunch, um, or any of the senior housing buildings, do they have meals offered there? There, there are. There are um, lunch meals here, and in my experience going to the different senior housing buildings, um, they do also offer another, uh, I think it's a very low cost or free meal. Um, and like I said, it, it should offer 33% of um, your daily intake of nutritious uh, micronutrients, which are the nutrients that the body needs um, that it cannot produce naturally that we have to get from food. Um, which is also, you know, another reason aside from dehydration, um, that food is important. Uh, a lot of things like iron deficiency anemia can be pre prevented. Exacerbation of existing um, diseases or symptoms can be prevented, um, like proper care of uh, you know, diabetic diet or heart disease. Um, blood pressure, cholesterol can all be supported uh, with a healthy and nutritious diet. Thank you. And kind of a last point, are there any uh, grocery, supermarket stores, what have you, that might be able to deliver food to a senior's home? Do you know of any in the area? So I think probably the most popular one is Peapod. Um, and, you know, we've all seen their trucks going around town. There's another newer one. Um, it's Roach Brothers uh, Grocery Store. And the only, I guess, barrier there is that it's a little more expensive than Peapod is but uh, they're both great programs that you can either access online or through catalog or over the phone that will deliver fresh groceries right to your door. So thank you, Elena. We talked about why nutrition is important. We talked about some barriers, transportation, mobility, cost, um, and we talked about uh, Minuteman Senior Services and Meals on Wheels, the congregate meal site here at the Council on Aging and at Drake Village uh, as well. We talked about the SNAP program, which is a state-funded uh, eligibility for, for low-cost food. Uh, we talked about, again, Meals on Wheels, Food Link, uh, the food pantry, uh, and some of the private grocers who can, can deliver food. So um, no matter the issue, if you have questions related to accessing food, uh, we certainly encourage you to contact the Council on Aging to, to learn about those options and troubleshoot any issues that, that may come up. So uh, I want to thank you for, for joining the program and offering your thoughts. And, Again, feel free to, to contact us, and uh, that's our episode of Living Out Loud. Thank you.
Hi everyone, my name is Mark Wexmanski. I'm the geriatric clinician here with the Arlington Council on Aging, and I'm here with Ruja. Ruja is a nurse and also a student at UMass Boston studying community health. So she's been with our agency for the past semester and has been learning about uh, the salient issues related to seniors in the community and maintaining good health. Uh, and we are here to talk about uh, falls uh, and why that it can be so impactful and what we can do to prevent falls. So with that, uh, Ruja, um, what are some of the consequences of suffering from a fall? Hi all, thank you for having me here. Um, so fall, uh, the consequences of fall, the great deal is like uh, when you fall, there will be hip, uh, your hip injury, brain injury, and that can lead to be hospitalized long term uh, rehab. And, um, and it can also create a fear of falling uh, in future, which can lead to for mus muscle atrophy and disbalance. And so if we are, um, you know, we have a fear of falling, are there any other type of contributing factors that might uh, lead us to fall, such as uh, medications or anything like that? Yes. Uh, so many uh, uh, many risk factors are there for fall, like uh, medications. So another is um, when you when you don't move a lot, when you have a sedentary life, your muscle gets weak and then um, your balance get off. So another thing, uh, the risk factor for fall uh, may be your vision. Uh, and um, similarly, dizziness, your medications, uh, cause, some medication might cause dizziness, dehydration, and um, uh, yeah, those are the risk factors for the falls. And so, you know, I love rugs, these great elaborate rugs in my home, and uh, I notice sometimes they're frayed and there's issue with them, and sometimes I notice, you know, in the bathroom, in the shower, it's very, very slippery in there. Um, and I've heard that from you know, seniors in the community as well. Uh, what can be done within the home to make it more uh, preventing from falls from happening? Yeah. Uh, similarly, uh, you have you you need you want to um, avoid a hazard around your house where you live, uh, and you have you would like to have enough lighting. Um, ra rather than having a lamp, you would uh, like to have a uh, ceiling uh, light. That uh, that is per similar light all over the room, um, and uh, install a hand grab bar on your on your bathroom, uh, so which you can hold on to, and then you get strength. Um, and so we talked about uh, muscle atrophy, um, you know, being sedentary because of a feeling of, of a fear of falling. Um, is there anything seniors can do here in town that could prevent muscle atrophy and you know maintain balance and you know, those general health things? Yeah, that's um, that's a great program in here, senior center. You can come on Wednesdays at 9:30 to 10:30, where they do a muscle strengthening exercise, and uh, they have yoga on Tuesdays, and they also have a chair yoga, uh, which will help you to uh, increase your balance and your muscle strength. And if you can't come to senior center, there are some uh, there are some simple exercises you can do at home. Like you can stay on a chair and then raise your leg and then raise your hands. That's how your uh, body can get strength, um, and that will avoid uh, fall. And so, do you know if there's any you know if someone had would like some professional help with some of these? Um, muscle strengthening activities. You know, we do have instructors who are uh, certified, who have excellent experience, but you know, some folks may want that, uh, you know, that kind of professional one-to-one -one, uh, guidance. Is, do you know of any type of resources around that they may be able to ask or you know, search out? So you can uh, talk to your uh, primary physician about physical therapy. Uh, a physical therapist can come to you or you can go to the physical therapy and then uh, do the um, exercise and um, yeah. Uh, have you noticed a lot of folks here in town, a lot of seniors using walkers? Yes, canes, walkers and um, uh, yeah. And so that's, that's a good thing. They can evaluate you, the physical therapy can evaluate you what kind of uh, cane or um, walker you can use and then that will save from fall too. So I've heard about some the stigma uh, that presents itself when folks are using a cane or a walker because sometimes folks see it as a, a symbolism of, of aging and, and poor health. 
um, how would you suggest someone who is considering using a walker uh, versus the consequences of, of falling? Do you have any thoughts or opinions on what might be better, what might be worse? Uh, in my opinion, safety is first. So um, I, I encourage all if you if you are able if you are if you have to use a walker or cane, uh, you are not using it because of embarrassment. I think uh, that you should use it um, just for your safety. So thank you. So um, that concludes our, our, our talks on uh, our talk on falls. Uh, Ruja, did you have any final thoughts on anything? Let's stay safe, all of us. So thank you for uh, discussing falls. We talked about the consequences of falling, which include um, a breaking of hip or head injury or any type of malevolent um, issue that relates to our bodies as a result of that fall. We talked about uh, reducing the risk of falling by making some home modifications by using a walker, by engaging in physical activity. Uh, we talked about if we have questions for providers about medications that may be contributing to falling, uh, utilizing physical therapy or other professional uh, muscle strengthening, balancing um, resources in the community. And we talked about you know, what's, what's more important about um, the stigma versus uh, the safety of using a walker and other assistive devices to prevent us from falling. Uh, so if you have any questions or uh, resources or any thoughts about this discussion today related to falls, um, please don't hesitate, hesitate to contact the Council on Aging. Um, you can contact me, you can contact other staff, uh, and we will address those issues. Um, so that concludes our, our talk on falls, and thank you for engaging and watching Living Out Loud. Thank you for watching. <laughs>